Hallelujah. You know, the Lord put a message on my heart, and I usually don't stand by the microphone, so I'm loud enough. You can hear me. Um, the Lord put a message on my heart a couple weeks ago, and the title of the message was, And the Glory of the Lord Appeared. And the glory of the Lord appeared. And if you don't know what was going on this morning already through the worship, the glory of the Lord was appearing to heal lives, to mend lives, to bring peace that surpasses all understanding. And something that the Lord was drawing me into, he'll always deal with the messenger first before he brings forth a message. Yeah. And he's been dealing with me on drawing near to him in prayer more and more and more and sitting with him more and more and more. And sometimes when we're caught up in a circumstance or a situation, that might not be the first place that we run to. Right, right. Yeah. That might not be, but God was giving me a message to say, church, it's time to draw near to the Lord Hallelujah. more and more. Because the only way that the glory of the Lord can appear is if you position yourself in his presence for his glory to appear to you. Amen. This is a personal relationship. Amen. It's an individual relationship. And if you would turn with me to Exodus 16, verse 9. Exodus 16, starting at verse 9. I'll begin reading for um, time's sake. And Moses spoke to Aaron, saying all, unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near. Before the Lord, for he has heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked to the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, <clears throat> I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you should be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. If you would pray with me, Father, I come before you and I thank you for the spirit of God that is in this place. I thank you for the work that has already begun and has been done in the lives of your people. God, you have come here to meet your people divinely, Lord, and this is an individual relationship. I pray that each one of us set our face towards you, that we would draw near to you. Lord, I believe that you want to heal bodies. God, I believe that you want to mend relationships. God, I believe that you want to set the captive free. Lord, I believe that you want to baptize in the Holy Spirit. God, I believe you want to move in power. Lord, I believe you this day and whom the Son sets free is free indeed lord let your glory appear in this place oh god it's nothing we can do lord it's what you've already accomplished lord so we look to you and we ask that you would move in this service lord have your way anoint me to speak and anoint us to hear that when we walk out of this building we would be changed for life Yes, Lord. Yes. Do an eternal work, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 What brought me to this was I began to read a book by Larry Lee. And it's called, Could You Not Tarry for One Hour? And just a quick background on Larry, and I like uh, Pastor Matt was speaking on, he just said the name of Jesus. And people began to get tense. But I don't know about you, but when we were saying the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God began to move in this place. When he is high and lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. And this man, Larry Lee, he had everything. 
everything. He had the girlfriend. He had the fast cars. He had the money. He had the house. He had everything that life could offer to say that is satisfying. But he found himself in a deep depression. And he found himself and he ran to his father who was an alcoholic. And his dad just patted him on the back and said, you'll be okay, my son. And then he turned to his mother who was a Christian. And she brought him to the church house. And he came up to the altar and the pastor handed him a card and said, fill this out. <laughs> A card is not going to heal your depression. Only Jesus Christ is going to be able to set you free. And so he ends up in a psych ward. And they put him on all these medications. And what caught his eye in the psych ward is it was a Catholic psych ward. And there was crucifixes all over the wall. If Jesus wants to get your attention, he knows how to reach you. He knows how to reach you in the deepest of depressions. He knows how to reach you in the darkest of despair. And his eye kept just catching these, these crosses, these crucifixes on the wall. So one day he took one off the wall and was carrying it around. And you would think that's kind of weird, right? Well, somebody, one of the other ladies who that was in the ward came out and looked at the crucifix and said, it's Jesus. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. And she just kept saying, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. So Larry Lee goes into his room that night in this fog of medicine, and all he could think about was, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. So he began to cry out to the Lord in that moment, God, if you're there, if it's Jesus, show up in my life. And God showed up. The glory of the Lord appeared in that psych ward that night, and it set Larry Lee free. And the Lord spoke to him, and he said to him, this is what you're going to do. And he said, but Lord, look where I'm at. And he said, get up. And be healed. So he got up and the peace of God yes. that we felt this morning covered his room, covered his mind, covered his heart. So the doctor comes by the next day and knocks on the door and walks in and says, Larry, how are you feeling? He said, I feel great. And that was a total change from all the other times the doctor had come in. And he said, well, Larry... How come you feel so great this time? He said, I talked with God. Hallelujah. Well, if you're in a psych ward and you're telling the doctor that you had a talk with God, that seemingly might be a problem. But your problem is not too big for God. See, the peace that Larry had experienced was undeniable. The doctor couldn't deny the fact that clothed in his right mind and had peace like never before. So that day, they released him Amen. from the psych ward. Hallelujah. They said, God set him free totally. And he began to do what God told him to do. And then he went to a Baptist college and got baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in the Baptist college and it caught fire to the Baptist That's college. Right. So it's contagious. That's right. See, God is going to reach you right where you're at. He's got plans for you. Big plans for you. But I say all that to say this. This man of God. That God set this man free from depression and the psych ward and the medications. And reached him and baptized him with power. This is a quote from his book. I thank God that I answered the call that is higher than my call to preach. And that is the call to pray. Every believer might not be called to preach, but every Christian is called to pray. Prayer is our duty. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer is like air. It's water. It's food. It's necessary for the believer's 
survival and growth. Yes. Yes. But many believers regard prayer as an optional activity. And Corey Ten Boom, and I'm not going to go into her story, but she said, is prayer your spare tire or is it your steering wheel? Yes. Yes. See, God wants a people that are willing to get on their face like we did this morning. You don't necessarily have to get on your face, and if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Express yourself to the Lord. But he wants our, ha our hearts to be seeking after him yes. and finding him and wanting more of him. Yes. See, but, and I'm going to embarrass some people this morning, but this is what I like to do. Not embarrass you, but I like, I like to do object lessons that get you to see the clear picture. Yeah. So this morning, I need seven people. Naya, can you come on? You know. Come on, Toya. Come on, Troy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Come on. I'm not going to embarrass you that bad. It's going to be okay, I promise. I'm going to get some of your kids, too. Come on. Please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Both of you. Both of you here. Everybody up on the second level. Second level here. All right, just yeah. give us one girl. This one of you guys back, because... A man right there, he's like, it's not happening. Oh, he's like, oh, good. He's like, oh, Thank you, darling. All right, so I want to talk to you about the Lord's covenant. See, the Lord has a saying of prayer, your kingdom come, your will. I'm talking about prayer here. Well, you need to know who you're praying to when you are praying. And the Lord says, my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants to reveal who he is and his glory on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Well, who is he? The Lord, my righteousness. Yeah. See, if you mess up, then you get up. You repent, you change directions, you look back to the blood of Jesus and know that you are righteous, not because of who you are, right. but because of who he is. Amen. I am righteous because of the blood of the lamb Amen. and only the blood of the lamb. So, Toya, you're going to be righteousness, okay? The Lord who sanctifies. He's the one that changes your heart. He's the one that changes your life. He's the one that molds and shapes and takes out and removes. And if he removes something, he will always give you something better. He sanctifies. He changes. He makes new. I'm telling you, I couldn't do it in myself. I couldn't set myself free from drugs. I couldn't set myself free from addiction. But he broke the chains. He set me free. He lifted every urge that comes my way. He did it. So he's the one who sanctifies. Amen. He's the Lord our God, our victory. Yes. You need victory in oh, something yeah. in your life this morning? Well, he's got the victory. The victory is only found in him. Hallelujah. The Lord our God, our provider. You need provision? Yes. Whatever it may be, at any moment of any day, yes. he will provide your need according yes. to his riches and according to his glory. Yes. So it's better than anything you could have right. ever came up yes, with Lord. on your own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord your God, your healer. Yes. Do you need healing this morning? And it doesn't have to be just physical. Right. There are some emotional yes. wounds. Yes. Wounds in our hearts, wounds in our minds that go deeper than any physical wound could ever yes. ail us. Yes. But he is the one that heals. Yes. You need your marriage healed. He'll heal your marriage. Hallelujah. You need your children healed. Hallelujah. He'll heal your children. Yes. Whatever you need healed, he is the Lord, your healer. Thank you. you need peace. We experience peace this morning. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Like when I lost my father, I lost my grandfather. In those circumstances, people crumble and run to the things that they can only know to run to. But the peace of God will guard you and keep yes, you. Lord. Thank you the Jesus. peace of God. The Lord our God, our shepherd. And last night I was praying, Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want. Want means you shall not lack any good thing. So when the enemy comes in and tells you God is with 
withholding this and God is withholding that and you don't get to do this anymore and you don't get to do that. He will give you all good things yes, that come from him. He will lead you and guide you yes. and direct you. And if you go the wrong way, he'll show you yes. and move you back on track. You don't have to worry because he is your shepherd and you shall not want. So if you could do me a favor and come up here and make a circle but face inward. And Pastor Matt, come here. You weren't getting away with it. You stand in the circle. Bring a circle. Bring a circle. Okay, Robert, I need you. I need some big men. Big men. Come on, big men. Right here on the end. Yeah, you. You're a big man. Come on. All right. So Pastor Matt is the believer. Where is he right now? He is centered in Christ. When you give your heart to the Lord, the Holy Spirit takes you and places you in Christ Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. So now he is surrounded with the very person who Christ is. Okay? But when we go through some things in life, there's some big situations that surround us. And we can represent fear, doubt, anxiety, frustration, all the, the unknown, what's going to happen. Can you surround them? Start circling them. Okay? They begin, these things begin to press on us. And darkness begins to press on us. Watch. When Pastor Matt, as a believer, focuses on these outward things, God, get a little bit smaller. Can y'all get a little low? Get a little low. God begins to get smaller when you focus on your problems, when you focus on your fears and doubts. But when you begin to focus on God, God, get a little bit bigger. No longer your problems one by one fade away. Fade away. Fade away. When you focus on God, God gets bigger than your problems. Yeah. For what I'm going to speak to you about. See, the children of Israel had just been set free from captivity. Yes, yes. They were in bondage to Egypt. And that represents our old life. Yes. Before Jesus Christ, we were in bondage to the enemy. We were in bondage to Satan. We were in bondage to our own dictates of our own heart. That's right. Whatever goes. Yes. Whatever feels good. Yes. I'm just going to be. It was a complete dominion of sin over your life. Yes. Sin reigned. Right. And you had nothing that could stop sin from reigning in your life. Well, God sent Moses to set his people free. Yes. And God covered them from the ten plagues with his divine hand of protection. Mm -hmm. He set them free from the grip of Pharaoh. Yeah. Then they're going along and he opens up. I'm setting the stage. He opens up the Red Sea yeah. for them. See, the enemy's not going to let go of you easily. That's right. So if you've been set free by the blood of Jesus and you've given your heart to him, Right up ahead is a Red Sea. That's right. right. And there was 50,000 horsemen, 2,000 footmen, and chariots on their heels. Mm -hmm. See, Satan's not going to let go of you easily. But see, God made a way for them to pass through the Red Sea yeah. and oh, said, man. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. And the enemy which you see now, you will see no more. When God doesn't work in your life, it's finished. That's it. You will see it no more. And not only does he have his hand of protection on you now, he will guide you a cloud by day and a fire by night. 
light. He will light up the way for you. But see, we were talking about prayer. You want to know the way to go? Get in his word. Get in his presence. Set yourself in Christ Jesus and look to him to show you which way to go and what decision to make. And he was accompanying them this whole time, leading them and guiding them by his glory. But you know where they found themselves? Scripture says they found themselves in the wilderness of sin. Mm. Believers found themselves in the wilderness of sin. And it was only one month after they'd been set free from Egypt. See, the enemy wants to try to get you off track and distracted. And even your own flesh will get you distracted from the things that God has for you. And let there be the right amount of stress and the right amount of pressure. And you will begin to forget all the things that God has already done for you. And all the faithfulness and all the miracles that he has already performed. And that's what happened to them. They began to forget about the Red Sea. And they began to forget that they were set free from slavery and the bondage of Egypt. They began to forget And they ended up in the wilderness. Well, what's a wilderness? It's rocky. It's dry. And it's void of any water. So the Spirit of God is not flowing in this place. It's hot with intense pressure. Think about your life. Think about times in our lives. It's empty. It's pathless. We're talking about children of God. Yeah. Okay? I'm not talking about the unbeliever. I'm talking about somebody who believes in Jesus Christ. We can find ourselves in this condition. It was wild and uncultivated. That means there was no life given. There was poisonous creatures there. There are things in this world that have come to poison your relationship with Christ. There are things in this world that are toxic to you and that can draw life out of you. Draw the life of Christ out of you. There's mirages. Mm. You will begin to see some things and hear some things that are not true. When you are a believer, there are lies that you will even tell yourself. There are lies that the enemy will sow. There are lies that your family will tell you. There are lies that all the friends then that aren't friends will tell you. But you, see that's why it's so personal. To set yourself apart Is prayer your spare tire or is it your steering wheel? Because you're going to have to know for yourself, God, on this journey. See, Pastor Matt was the only one in the middle of Christ in that circle. See, it's individual. We're each in Christ in that circle. But we have to be looking to who he is for ourselves. For ourselves. But I began to think so many times we find ourselves in these situations and we begin to look at God unjustly. We can begin to ask him why, and he's a harsh God, and why would you let this happen, and how did this happen this way, and why are you letting them come against me, and all these different things that are, that are happening, but if you remember correctly, the Holy Spirit was the one who led Jesus in the wilderness right. to be tempted by the devil. Think about that. The Holy Spirit, that word led in the Greek means to be driven into that position. The Holy Spirit will allow things in your life to test your faith. Will you continue to believe in him? Will you continue to trust in him even if you find yourself in intense heat? Even if you find yourself under pressure or surrounded by the enemy, will you still trust and believe him? See, and what happened with Jesus was he returned in power. See, Jesus is allowing these things in our lives to build our faith. That we would return and that we would tell somebody else and it would be by the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. So he allows you to face these things to make you stronger and built up in him. Will you rely on his spirit? Will you rely on his word? Will we rely on prayer and our relationship with Christ? 
Israel will we begin to murmur and complain. See, can I get a witness? Because I know that I find myself murmuring and complaining sometimes. I know I'm not perfect. Um, about things that have been going on in my life. But you want to know what happened to Korah? When they began to murmur and complain, there was 250 men that were renowned, that were in the assembly, that were famous in the community. And they said to God, you brought us to kill us. You ever feel like that? God, why'd you bring me here? I'm dying in this place. What's going on, Lord? I'm going to die here. Why'd you bring me here, Lord? And they began to complain and murmur. And then they began to not even want to get up from the position that they were in anymore. Mm. They didn't even want to go see the leadership. They didn't want to go to church. Mm, didn't want to go to church that morning. Okay? They didn't want to. So they began to rebel and not listen anymore. And God allowed the earth to swallow them up. When we get our eyes off of Jesus Christ, your situation yeah. is going to swallow you up. Right. And it will swallow you up and all your goods up and everything else you have up. Because you will be consumed right. 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 with the situation. Right. When you stare at it and murmur about it and complain about your neighbor and this person I work with. And, and I'm only preaching to you because I know. Amen. Okay? Amen. I know. Yeah. And it, it becomes to consume your mind and your heart. It will swallow you up. Then not only do you murmur and complain, but you begin to point the finger. Well, it's Pastor Matt's fa a fault that, that happened. Oh, well, it's the worship team's fault that that happened. The worship wasn't good enough. That's not the problem that you didn't enter in. You can enter in. I can enter in my bedroom. No music. That's right. Okay? So you can enter in. Oh, well, it's my boss's fault. Oh, well, it's my roommate's fault or it's this person and you begin to look point the finger yeah. at other people I'm preaching reality right. this morning this is real things yes. that we yes. face and go through and when they began to look at other people you know what happened they spent 38 years going around and around and around and around in the wilderness 38 years they didn't have to spend that long right. time there God had a destination for them. But because they couldn't stop looking at the circumstance that they were in and trust him, he allowed them. He's not harsh because they could have been out. Right. But he allowed them to go through that to teach them something. And then not only were they murmuring and complaining and blaming others, they began to say, you know what? It would be better if we just went back. I felt like that before, and I'm not even going to lie, right. and I've come from some really hard stuff, but when you're under the right amount of heat and the right amount of pressure, you can feel sometimes it was better off back there when I didn't feel anything. Lord, help. Come on. Right. When I didn't have to deal with life, I was in my own euphoria that was actually killing me. That's right. Okay, and that's... What happened even with Lot's wife, if you remember, Lot's wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. God told her, don't look back. Because <coughs> they pulled him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, which was a place of uh, no restraint and lewdness and wickedness. And they found themselves in this condition. And God will send help. If you find yourself in that condition, because he will never, never leave a heart that is after him, even if we mess up, right. even if we find ourselves in a condition that we don't want to be in, he will send help and he will pull us out. But you know what she did when God said, don't look back. She began to look back, but it wasn't just like a glance. It was a wistful desire. Mm. Right. Like she was missing that. Wow. Yeah. And she turned into a pillar of salt. See, that represents death to me. Because there's nothing but death, hell, 
and destruction when we begin to look back at our old life. Right. Even places God has already brought you through in Christ. Right. 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 Don't even look back to those because he wants to press you forward. Amen. New victories. There's more. There's more. There's more. And there's more. There's always more in Christ. Thank you, Lord. And the children of Israel, they began to feel this way. And they began to murmur and complain. And know that when, when the enemy tells you to go back or your own flesh wants to go back, it's always a lie. Yeah. Yeah. It will never be better That's right. for you to go back. Never. And they began to slander the character of God. And they began to say, we're going to die here of, of hunger. But all they had to do was call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Just Jesus. And God promised to bring them to a specific destination. If God promised you something, his promises do not return void. Yeah. His word is true. It's yes and amen. If he brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Amen. So remember that his grace, it got there first. Yeah. Before your problem even was before your eyes, yeah. his grace was already there to fix it. Yeah. His yeah. grace was already there to change you to yeah. go through it. Hallelujah. His grace is sufficient for you. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So then, after they find themselves in this condition... God says, I'm going to pronounce my glory. So you, fin you find yourself in that condition. And if I were God, I'm glad I'm not God. But if I were God, I would probably be like, man, this people, I'm done with that. <laughs> They're just mur I just delivered them. I opened up the Red Sea. I did all these miracles. And they still murmured and complaining and doubting who I am. Have you ever had? doubt your character before and you're, you're like, you know what, I'm done with you. And that was it. Well, these people began to, to say these things about the Lord and about the leadership. Do not touch God's anointing. That's right. Amen. Amen. They were placed in this position not by men, but by God. To teach you, to lead you, to help you. And you better know those who stand behind this pulpit, go through it. No one's preaching down. Because I'm walking through right with you. Amen. And it says in Exodus 16, 4, Then the Lord said un, unto Moses, Behold, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. See, he said, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven. See, you can't see provision anywhere in sight. It is nowhere to be found. But God said, don't worry. I'm going to rain it down from heaven. My fingerprints are going to be all over it. You're only going to be able to say it was just Jesus who did right. that. It was only God who came through. And then it says, you shall gather every day. Okay, so you need to go and gather provision every day. So that takes an action from you. Yes. You don't just get to sit back. While God just rains down manna from heaven. Amen. You have to believe. You have to get up. And you have to go gather. So you want strength for the day? Get up. Go sit in the presence of Jesus. Yes, yes. Go worship him. Yes. Go read his word. Let him. I'm not preaching a law. I'm not telling you this is how you're saved. No, this is what you do because you are saved. That's right. This yeah. is what you do because you need it. Yeah. It's like air you breathe and water you need. You need to sit in the presence of God. Man, get up and go gather every single day because the provision has already been made. So if you're not getting it, maybe we need to take a look in the mirror and find out what are we doing? What are we receiving from what God? Are we believing what God has done? And Moses reminds them, he's doing this to prove you. See, so he tests you. How will you react? Are you going to react in fear? Or are we going to react in faith? 
Thank you, Jesus. Are we going to be proven faithful and trusting him? Or are we going to walk away and look back? The same God that brought you out of sin and slavery is the same God that's going to provide for you each and every day. Yes. Yes. He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. So now that we're his children, how much more? Think about your own child. How much more would you do? How much further would you go? How much more would you reach for that child? And in Exodus 16, 7, it says, And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord. And when I read that, in the morning, you shall see the glory of the Lord. I got really excited because I wasn't thinking about in the morning, like when we wake up. Like I was thinking about it's really dark in my life. And there's a lot of pressure, but morning is coming. Yes. See, morning is coming, church. Whatever you need, yes. morning is coming. Yes. Morning. The birds are going to chirp. The sun is going to rise. The glory of God is going to appear. So whatever you're facing, I'm telling you that morning is coming. Late in the midnight hour, I'm going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around and work it in your face. Yes, morning is coming. Thank you, Jesus. He said, my mercies are new every morning. There's a song that says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Your mercies never come to an end. And if I could sing, I'd sing it for you. Because in my head, it sounds really good. <laughs> they are new. Feed upon the faithfulness of God yes. each and every day. When everything around you says God is not going to be faithful to you, know his character is true. Know that he is good and his intentions for you are right. right. And his steadfast love never ceases. See, what I love about this story is they were all living right. Like... They didn't have it all together. That's right. They were, you know, walking on the mountain tops, and the glory of, of God was just following them, and angel wings were coming, and you know, their faces. No, they were murmuring and complaining and blaming and pointing the finger. And I'm not saying that's justified, okay? Because it's not. But the glory of God wanted to appear yeah. in their lives, so He could prove not only them but who He was. One more time. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Because he's not surprised at our humanity. That's right. He, he's not surprised at that. And the glory of God appeared. And Moses, on verse 9, it says, And Moses spoke to Aaron, saying unto all the congregation of Israel, Come near before the Lord. He has heard your murmurings. First of all, I want to say this. He said to all the congregation of Israel. Yeah. He didn't say just to the worship team. Right. He didn't just say just to the children's ministers. Right, right. He didn't just say just to those who stand at the door. He didn't say no to all yeah. of the congregation. Mm. And this is what was really hitting home with me about prayer. He is calling us to draw near. All yeah. of us to yeah. draw near. See, it took all of them for the glory of God to appear. One mind, one body, one heartbeat, running after Christ. Thank you, Lord. And I want to tell you this. There is not one in this room that he wants left behind. That's right. You are not overlooked. You are not forgotten. You are not. So don't believe the lie. When it comes to you right. saying you're not good enough and you're not worthy. No, his blood was enough. Amen. It bought right. you already you, and it said it was finished. Amen. So it's finished. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Right. Your bank account is full. Okay? You have all that you need for your walk in Christ. Amen. So draw near to that. To come near means to draw and get in the presence of God. It also means to go with a purpose, to move forward by action, to be close and present, to stand in his power and his might, and to take that which he paid for with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, you can take from what God has already paid for. Yeah, yeah. It's yours. Yeah. You need peace. 
It's yours. You messed up. You need some righteousness. It's yours. You need change. He sanctifies. It's yours. You need provision. It's yours. You are a child of the king and you have the keys to the kingdom and you can go and take from the storehouse and you can say it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. mine." Because the blood of Jesus said that it's mine. And I'm not going to believe that it's not mine. That's right. That's right. Because my God died for me and paid for me. We need to also repent of those behaviors. Yes, a child of God must repent. I know there's doctrines that say we don't need to repent anymore after we're saved. Once saved, always saved, and all these different things out there. No, a child of God should live a life of repentance. Constantly recognizing, constantly seeing, oh God, okay, you might not have those big sins outwardly anymore, but what about that attitude? Right, right. Or that mindset? Or, and I'm just speaking from experience, because I know Naya, Naya can tell you. I can have an attitude. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> and so all these different things, and I need to constantly, oh God, help me. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Change directions. Look to the blood of Jesus. God, change me. Take yes, this. Lord. Mold me. Shape yes, me. Lord. Do what you have to do in me. See, he's drawing us to that place. But it takes a repenting heart to keep going after him. And then it says in verse 10, and it came to pass. I love those words. I can read those words all day long. Every time I hit it. And it came to pass. Yes. See what he said. And it came to pass. It will always come to Thank pass. You. See they, you see their condition. The pronouncement of his glory. I'm going to do this. Then you see. And it came to pass. It's a pattern. The way that God works. It will always to pass. It will always come to pass. Thank you, Lord. You know, I love this song. It says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. God will do what he said he will do. He will stand by his word. He will come through. God will do what he said he will do. He's not a God he shall lie, he will come through. See, when you get in those tight spots, learn to worship him. See that song right there? I could just go in with that right there and be like, okay, God, you said you're not a God that you shall lie, that you will come through. That scripture, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If you don't know a song, get out your Bible. Start singing the scripture over your life. Start believing the word of God and what he said. And then it says, it came to pass, and the whole congregation looked to the wilderness. And I was like, that's kind of weird, Lord. Why would they look to the wilderness? Why are they not like looking up like for the glory of God? But you know what I, I recognized is they began to look at the condition that they were in. See, God's going to show you the condition that you're in. If you sit with them, he'll show you what we need. And they began to see the hot and the empty and the broken and the, and the dust and the mirages. And God began to reveal this to them and the things that happened. But then God said, my glory is going to appear. Even though you find yourself in this condition, behold, the glory of the Lord shall appear. Think about it. When they were in the fire, the fourth man showed up. The glory of the Lord appeared. When there was a mountain, he moved it. The glory of the Lord appeared. Is there a bitter situation in your life? Put the tree, put the blood in the situation, and it will become sweet again. The glory of the Lord appeared. God knows how to break idols. He knows how to light up the darkness. He knows how to heal the sick by his word. He knows how to raise the dead. He knows how to cause giants to crumble before him. Yes. See, all those circumstances, the glory of the Lord appeared. Yes. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore.
more. So behold, behold means end suddenly. So buckle your seatbelts and get ready because you're going to see it with your eyes. It's not going to be something that's going to be far off. It's going to be a suddenly. And then suddenly this happened and you're going to see it. Yes. It's going to be before you. You're not going to miss it. Don't feel like you're going to miss what God has for you. You're not going to miss it. And it appeared in a cloud. This represented a greater glory. The cloud represented a greater glory. See, your ladder will be greater than your former. Yes, Lord. What God has already done does not compare yes. to yes. what God is about right. to do. Right. And I don't mean, I mean that individually. Yes. I mean that corporately. Yes. I mean that in this specific yes. church yes. right yes. here. Yes. I mean in Baton Rouge where I live. I mean the yes. glory of the Lord in Colorado, in, in New Jersey, in New York. The glory of the Lord is going to appear and we're not going to be we're not going to miss it yes. we're not going to miss what he's going to do thank you jesus and then further on in the scripture it says it says at evening you shall eat flesh and in the morning you shall be filled with bread and you shall know that i'm the lord your god and i was like okay eat flesh all right yeah lord and but you know what i seen in that scripture is that in the evening I'm going to take care of you. In the morning, you're going to be filled. And you shall know. Filled meant a constant state of fulfillment and satisfaction. As long as you continue to trust and believe and seek his face and repent of those ways and draw near to him, he will constantly provide for you evening and morning, day in and day out. And it won't just be a little bit here and a little bit there. You will always be satisfied in Jesus Christ. You don't have to run to and fro any longer. He will satisfy the longing of your heart. I remember when I would run to thing, to drug, to this, to that, to fulfill a satisfaction that could not be filled only through the presence of God, only through the glory of God. And he promises it every single day. So believe, get up, draw near to him and take that which is yours. Yeah. It's yours to have. And now if you would come up and if we could stand because I am closing. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I just, hallelujah, Lord. I want to present to you this morning. I know that we already came up here and we received from the Lord that which he had in that moment. But I want to tell you that there's always more. Yes. There's always more that you can receive from this Lord and the Lord. And not to be afraid of the altar. Because the altar isn't a place to be embarrassed. The altar is a place that professes your faith. God, I need help and I need more. God, I need you to move in my life. God, I need this greater glory. I need you to do this, Lord. Because you're the only one that can do it. I found myself in this way. Wilderness. I found myself in this hard spot. And God, I want to see your glory. Because he said, and it came to pass that the glory of the Lord appeared. So I don't know what you need this morning. And what I need might not be what you need, but he knows how to meet all of our needs at one time. So I encourage you to come up and to spend a moment in his presence yes. so that he can reveal the glory of the Lord, that the glory of the Lord can appear.